Hey y'all, thanks for checking out Euclid Mining. So today I'm going to be showing you the overclocking and undervolting of my L3 Plus. Now I'll be going over broad strokes on how to do overclocking all the way down to fine tuning each chip individually and how that's done. Now I'm showing you the settings that are for my L3 Plus. I wouldn't take these settings and copy them to any of my other L3 Pluses because each uh, each miner has uh, four boards, 72 chips, 288 chips total. And with silicon lottery, you can't guarantee that any of these chips are the same from one miner to another. So each miner is going to be its own animal and you're going to need to fine tune each one individually. I'm just going to be showing you what I'm doing with my miner. So take it with a grain of salt. Let's hop over. I'll show you what I got going on. All right, y'all, so this is my L3 Plus, and let's look at the status. Now, I just rebooted this one, so it's not going to be the best example, but I'll just give you an idea of what to look for. So the first is the chain. The second are the A6. Those are the individual chips on the board. The frequencies, the voltage, the watts, the mega hash, the hardware errors. So what we're going to be looking for are the hardware errors. That's where I start off. So we're going to look for ones that are getting more than 10 to 12 hardware errors per hour. That's basically the number I stick with. Um, this one never seems to get any hardware errors, so it's doing great, though I wouldn't necessarily just copy these settings to the other boards because each board is different. Each board uh, has its own chips, which each chip is different. So you really have to start to fine tune this as you go along. But I'm going to show you the different ways to do this. So first things we can look at is the auto tune. So in here is the most generic way to uh, overclock your L3 plus. Um, you simply come in here, go through the drop down, choose what you want, and away you go. Now remember that if you do choose the higher ones, you're going to really need to start pulling some serious power from the wall. And if you're using a regular house to a household outlet, you're either going to blow your circuit or you're going to burn your house down. So know what power you need to pull before you start uh, overclocking um, because you will run into a problem so uh, but this in here is the most generic way to do it this does the miner as a whole as all four boards all 288 chips everything as a, as a, as a single unit this will overclock it now let's say you want to start to get into a little bit more involved well you come into this section and in here you can see each board that's in here now, if you use a section up here, this is for the global settings. Now, your global settings, anything you put here will apply to anything down here if it's set in the global settings. So if you have it set for global, then anything I put here will translate down to here. So you would have all of these set at global. And what I would do is I would start here. I would start looking to adjust your minor here and then um, have all of the boards react to it as one. Then let it run for an hour, see what kind of hardware errors you're getting, and then start fine tuning from there. So if you look up here and you're like, okay, these settings were doing great for these two boards. I had almost no hardware errors. Well, that's good. Then I would come down here and I would put these settings directly into these two areas right here. Then I would come back up to the other ones that you're having trouble with. Now I know board number one is definitely going to be uh, my biggest problem child here. And board number four is also giving me a little trouble. So I'm going to work with both of those. I'm just going to go ahead and click this just to kind of reset where they were. So now that I know which boards are giving me the most trouble, like I said, I'll take these settings and bring them down and put them in to all of the boards and then start adjusting from there. So this one, uh, when we look at the frequency, remember that when you're looking at frequency and power, if you're demanding uh, a higher uh, workload from each chip, you're going to need to supply the proper amount of power. Now, if you give a board too little power, it'll starve itself and you could burn it out. If you give it too much power, you can burn it out as well. So you really got to find that perfect, you know, the sweet spot to where that's going to be. Um, so right now I've got mine. Well, it was set at the lowest. Right now I've got it at 9.56. And that's because I was getting the hardware errors. I was having trouble. So I wanted to give it a little bit more power. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to go right up to the top and give it as much power as it needs. Now, obviously, this is not going to be good for efficiency because it's just going to be dumping more power onto this board than it needs, especially with me working at the lower end of the frequencies. So if I was moving up, uh, let's say, you know, into more into the yellow section, I would definitely want to start moving up with my power as well. But I'm looking for a lower mega hash because I'm looking for the least amount of power possible. So right now, um, 260 
Um, I'm going to leave it at 260. I'm going to leave it at 260, but I'm going to give that board all the power that it wants, basically, um, well, not all that it wants, but certainly uh, a lot more than it would typically need for the lower settings that it's going to be at. And I'm going to see if my hardware errors persist. If they do, then I'm going to start working more on the frequency um, and see where that is. If they go down, then I knew that it was a power issue and I can then start lowering this down in increments one at a time. <laughs> and figuring that out. Now remember, each time you do one of these changes, you need to reboot your miner and let it run for about an hour uh, because you want to see how many hardware errors you're getting. Unless you reboot it and in the first 10 minutes you see 30 hardware errors, then you're like, okay, I already know that's going to be a problem. Uh, otherwise, you really do want to let it run for an hour. So as you can tell, this does take a little bit more time, but this is a little bit more involved if you want to go in this direction. So uh, the fourth board also, chain four, was giving me some trouble. So I'm also going to give it all the power at once, but I am going to leave it at the 260 for the uh, frequency and I'm going to let it sit there. So we're going to go ahead and apply this and reboot the miner. But before I do that, I want to show you one more section and that's the manual chip frequency. Now, probably a lot of you have seen this and your eyes glaze over because you don't even know where to start or end over here. Well, this is now showing you each board individually and each chip individually. So if you were to see some with a dark green or a yellow or a red, you would know which chips are causing problems. Now, sort of, unfortunately, none of my chips are reporting that they're having any trouble, but I am getting more hardware errors than I want. So I won't be able to individually fine tune mine, but I'm running at 260 frequency. So in here is where I would come in and I could start moving the frequencies. See, I'm at 260 right now. So if I want to set the power to a certain point, but this particular chip is giving me trouble, I may want to drop that chip down. And that may be for that one chip. Maybe there's three or four chips, you know, this one here, you know, one over here, and maybe two of them right over here that are giving you trouble. So you want to drop the frequency down over here just a little bit uh, and see if then these change. Reboot the miner and then come back to this section and look to see if you're getting any of the abnormal colors um, that you should or shouldn't be getting. Uh, and that's basically it. So in short, to sum it up, um, there are... Uh, you know, three basic or four basic really ways if you want to do this. One is in here if you just want to be really broad strokes. Two is if you want to then start fine tuning uh, the miner as a whole. Three, if you now have fine tuned it or gotten it to a point where you're seeing what you like, then you could come down here and start fine tuning each board um, to power or frequency. And then once you get that going pretty well, if you still notice that you're still getting some hardware errors, you can come over to the manual chip uh, frequency configuration and then start finding each chip that's causing you problems and working on them by dropping them down one or two at a chance uh, or at a, at a time. Uh, so at 285, I may want to drop this down, you know, maybe two and see what I get. Uh, if you and then, you know, maybe one and slowly check that out. But again, you're going to have to let this reboot and sit for about an hour to truly get a good reading. And also when you reboot, it takes a little while for your miner to really uh, tune itself as it's working longer and longer. So you definitely want to let it run for a little while. If we look at profitability, I know that I'm getting about 355 on this at 472. I took this directly from the wall. The miner does show you how much power it's pulling, but it's not that accurate. Mine was about 12 watts off. Off. So I went to the wall. I have a PDU with a built-in power meter. I was able to see exactly how much power I was pulling. So if we calculate that out, we can see for Litecoin and Dogecoin, it's negative 29 cents right now. Well, that's because the market's down and that's just what it is. But if I was to put in the settings that I had from before, and here I had 505 and here I had 716. So if earlier we would have been losing 29 cents, now we would have been losing 51 cents. So as you can see, we are using more power and we are not really earning too much more, not enough to offset for what our profitability is. So I would want to look for more and more efficient settings. Unfortunately, the most efficient settings you can get on this miner right now still probably won't get you profitable in this market. Um, that's just the way it is. Uh, 
So this is really just sort of overclocking 101. Uh, this video was just really to show you what I'm doing with my L3 Plus. Um, be careful with these settings. You know, don't give your uh, uh, miner too, too much power. You may burn it out, like I said. And remember that the more power you give it, the more heat it's going to generate. And you want to have the proper ventilation. So anyway, if the video helped, definitely throw me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. If you watch any of my other videos, I'm going to have one right over there. Nope, actually up over there. But if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can hit that button. It's right over there. Thanks for checking in. I'll see you all next time.